Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about integrated rate laws and do the integrated rate law practice problems. So the first one of the you do, because we did the we do together in class, is this one that tells us this reaction takes place at 75 degrees Celsius and this data is gathered. It says based on the data, what is the reaction order? Well, we can see that when we graph concentration versus time, that this is clearly not linear. So we know it's not zero order. So the next thing I'm gonna look at is does it have a constant half-life? And so I can see that at this time, the concentration is two, and right here, the concentration is one. So that's half. The concentration decreased by half in that thousand seconds. So let's see. It goes from one to 0.5 between here and here, and one at a thousand seconds and 0.5 at 2,000 seconds. So that tells me in a thousand seconds it went, it cut by half, and in the next thousand seconds it cuts it by half again. So it has a constant half life of 1,000 seconds. So that tells me this is a first order reaction because it has a constant half. Okay, so our next question tells us our first order reaction has 1 16th of the original amount left after 500 seconds, and it asks for the half-life of the reactant in this reaction. So, um, we have a bunch of different ways that we can solve this problem. One is to say that um, we know that um, well, we can use the half-life equation. We know that the half-life is equal to k, I'm sorry, 0 0.693 over k. So half-life equals 0 0.693 over k. Um, but I don't know k. What I do know is that I have 1 16th left after 500 seconds. So I know that um, after one half-life, I'm going to have half left. And after two half-lives, I'm going to have one-half times one-half, or one-fourth. So the other way to look at this is that the concentration at any time is equal to um, one-half raised to the number of half-lives times the original concentration. So if I look at that, then I know that one-sixteenth is one half raised to the number of half lives because it tells me that at 500 seconds that um, I have 1 16th of the original amount. So 1 half raised to the x is 1 16th. So how many half lives is that? Well, um, I would have to raise 1 half to the fourth power to get 16. So that would be four half lives. So that's another way, another way to solve it. And um, then the least algebraic way to solve it would be to say, okay, well, after one half-life, it's going from one to a half, and then it goes to half of a half, which is a fourth, and then it goes to a half of a fourth, which is an eighth, and then it goes to a half of an eighth, which is one sixteenth. And that's one, two, three, four, half-lives. So we have lots of different approaches to this. Um, and of course, the final way would be to use the equation, which is to say that the concentration at this time is equal to um, k times the time, um, sorry, negative k times the time, plus the natural log, sorry, we log in here um, times the concentration of, at, of A at time 0. And I can substitute in x here and 1 16th x here, and then that would allow me to solve backwards. But this one is a whole lot more algebra, so both this approach and this approach are probably the fastest for determining how many half-lives there are. Now, now that I know that there are four half-lives, and 
four half-lives is 500 seconds. Well, 500 divided by four gives me 125 seconds. So one half-life is 125 seconds. Okay, by much the same process, we can see that if 93.75% of a radioactive isotope of technetium-99 decays in 24 hours, what is the half-life? Well, how much do I have left? If 93.75% decays, that means I have 6.25% remain, remaining. And... Um, 6.25% is 6.25 out of 100, which is the same thing as, um, let's see, 1 16th. Um, so at 1 16th, now I have the same math that I had before, 1 half raised to what power is 1 16th, um, and I can solve for x and find that x equals 4. I know that 4 half-lives equals, equals 24 hours. And so I know that 1 half-life is um, 6 hours. Okay, so moving on to our next question. All right, so again, we have concentration versus time data. Uh, if we look at our concentration versus time, we can see that's clearly not linear. Um, I can then look at 0.82. Oh, gracious, I don't see one that's exactly a half. Let's see what we can figure out. doesn't look like concentration natural log doesn't look like we have a constant half-life either because we go from 0.82 to 0.4 in 20 seconds and then from 0.4 to 0.267 in the next 20 seconds so this does not appear to be zero order because the concentration versus time data is not linear it does not appear to be um, a first order because we don't have a constant half-life and so um, I'm afraid that we're going to have to decide that this is second order. Because it doesn't have a constant half-life and because the constant graph of concentration versus time is not linear. Um, and so I would need to find the line here in order to find the value of k. Okay, and my apologies when I um, paused the video so that I could um, run the analysis. Somehow I stopped recording instead of pausing, so, and didn't realize that. So, um, having run this on my spreadsheet, and graphed it, I get a line when I graph um, one over concentration versus time. Um, I get that my graph is equal to, the line of my graph is y equals 0, 0, 0, 0.009 times x plus 1.222. And the um, regression analysis, the r squared value for that is 1. So this tells me that this is a very good fit for the line. So that confirms our theory that this is second order because the graph of 1 over concentration versus time is linear. That means I can write a rate law that tells me that the rate is equal to k times the concentration of AP squared. And my value for k is going to come from the slope of my line. So my value for k is 0 0.0629. 
In order to figure out what the units are, we need to come back to this equation. We know that this is going to be measured in molarity, and it's squared. And we know that the rate is going to be measured in molar per second, or molarity per second. So we need the units of K to cancel out so that we wind up with molar per second on this side. So that means that I'm going to have to have 1 over molar per second in order to um, cancel out one of these molarities. And so I wind up with 0.0629, 1 over molar times seconds. Or we could also write this as 0.0629 liters per mole per second because it's the same thing as 1 over molar. Okay, last problem then is um, asking me how much of my initial concentration is going to remain after 55 seconds. And it tells me that this is, well, it doesn't tell me what order this reaction is. But I can look at my K value, and I can see that this K is in per seconds. So again, if my rate equals K times a concentration raised to some power, and I know that the rate is going to be in molar per second, and I know that this is going to be in molarity, well, this must be 1 over seconds. If this is 1 over seconds, 1 over seconds times molar gives me molar per second. So that tells me that this exponent has to be 1. So I know this is a first order reaction. Now, knowing that this is a first order reaction, I can write my integrated rate law, which says that the concentration at time the new time, so we're going to use 55 seconds, is equal to negative k times the time plus, oops, I forgot the natural log, sorry, natural log of the initial concentration. And so um, I can plug in the values for k and for time and for um, concentration here, and we have then that the natural log of the concentration at 55 seconds is equal to negative 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth times um, 55 seconds plus the natural log of 0 0.15 and when we go through and we do all of the work, that we find that the concentration of A, or in this case cyclopropane, um, at 55 seconds, well, when you do all the math, it comes out to be 0 0.149. But we only have two sig figs. And so my concentration comes out to be the same after 55 seconds that it was at the beginning. Um, now, we know, obviously, that it's changed a little bit. But if we look at that very, very small k, it makes sense that um, the change is going to be very small. So um, I hope that this is helpful. As always, if you have questions, let me know.